Hey all, welcome back to SLB, Basement Bourbon Bar. I am Kurt Ludington, your resident host and bartender. Welcome to part two of our whiskey review shows. Uh, our first show, if you haven't seen that yet, I'm sure Trenton will give you a link to where you can catch that one. Uh, that was our first uh, uh, whiskey review that we did last week. And it included bourbons and rice, and I even snuck in a little bit of a surprise with an Irish whiskey. So today we're going to use the same platform as we used for the last video, which would include what is my daily drinker, what is my cheap mixer, what is my favorite Friday night pour, my favorite uh, bottle to impress a guest, and then also a bottle that you'd only open up on a special occasion. With that, it seems like it, it, it pretty much includes a good variety of uh, price ranges and, uh, and different uh, um, choices of scotch, if you would. So, before we get started, if you would please though, hit that subscribe button. Once you've done that, hit that notification bell. That way you won't miss a single episode of the show. And like with the previous whiskey review uh, show, please list your comments below because uh, that's how we learn by bantering back and forth as far as uh, the whiskey selections of your choice would be concerned. Now, I want to include one thing that I just forgot to do on the last video. But again, uh, just as a disclaimer, I'm not an expert in any of this. I'm just a normal guy down here in my basement that enjoys... Uh, bourbons, rye, Irish whiskeys. I've got some uh, Japanese whiskeys, you know, and I have uh, scotch. We've got three or four hundred bottles of whiskeys down here. But just in a little uh, uh, helping hand to you as far as uh, searching out particular bottles, uh, I made a lot of mistakes, especially in the early going, because I've only been doing this for probably, I don't know, five years. Let's say that. And I made a lot of mistakes at the very beginning, uh, running out and purchasing a bottle because it was a special release, or this is supposed to be great, or, and I didn't really do any research, and I bought it right away, and I got it home, and I was like, man, this is really not even that good. You know, I just wasted 75 bucks on this bottle. So, uh, what I like to do is research before I buy anything. I like to research. Uh, what helps me out more than anything is called the distiller app. That's an app you can get on your phone. Uh, what it is is um, they have expert uh, whiskey reviews. They have a particular individual who's an expert in that field review a particular bottle and they go through with all their tasting notes and a little bit of the history of the bottle and they rate that between 0 and 100. So obviously, with a review from a professional, if you have uh, any type of review that's anywhere above 90, in their mind, it's going to be a really good whiskey to buy. Now, however, I've also got stuck with that because I've also brought some bottles home where I was like, uh, my, my tastes do not agree with that particular expert with that specific bottle. So what's good about the distiller app is that there's thousands if not hundreds of thousands of people that have that app on their phone and they will give their particular reviews as well. So uh, in a particular bottle of whiskey, if you look it up, you can not only get the tasting notes and a little bit of history of the bottle from the expert, but you can also see where there, a lot of times there's hundreds if not even a thousand different personal reviews. And I really take that to heart because they'll average all those reviews and give the uh, uh, one out of five star reviews for a personal review. So, for example, if I come up to a, a specific whiskey that the expert reviewer is going to rate it about a 90 or 92, I'm immediately I'm going to read that. Oh, I like I like a lot about that. And but then I'm going to also follow up and look at the individual reviews. And if the individual reviews average out anywhere close to four stars you can pretty much bet your boots it's going to be a really really nice bottle to buy other than that you can search out some other independent uh, experts on the internet as well and read their independent reviews on specific bottles but whatever you do before you buy anything do your research 
make it sure it's something that's going to fit your taste profile and that way hopefully you won't waste any money all right enough of that let's move on today's show is scotch nothing but scotch we're doing scotch reviews and i'll just completely be honest with you i really wasn't a scotch fan like five years ago i just it just really wasn't my thing you know but as time went on i guess it's kind of like drinking coffee i don't even drink coffee but you know you always hear people say once you drink a little bit you get used to it, and then pretty soon you love it well that's my case here with scotch so let's get started my daily drinker in the scotch category is this from Brook Lottie, the classic Laddie. It's a beautiful blue bottle. It is an ILA scotch, but it is completely unpeated. So this is a non-peated ILA scotch, which is a little bit unusual. Again, it comes from Brook Lottie, and it's going to run you, I don't know, $50, $60. All right, this particular scotch is made with 100% Scottish barley. You're going to get some a little bit of apple citrus, some sweet cereal malts. It's just a, a really good, well-rounded scotch for $50 or $60. Now, as you notice, for a single malt scotch, most of them are, are 75 and up. So to get a really good tasting uh, single malt scotch for $50, $60, bucks, that's, that's not only uh, cost effective, but also tastes great. That is an excellent buy, and for those reasons, the Classic Laddie is my daily drinker. All right, moving on from there, my cheap mixer. I have to be honest about this one. For the last couple of years, my cheap mixer has always been monkey shoulder. And of course, for a cheap mixer, you don't particularly want to use a single malt scotch because it's going to be pretty spot, uh, pricey. But several months ago, uh, I bought a bottle of this uh, Naked Grouse. It is a blended malt scotch. And I bought it specifically because I have a book here that I wanted to infuse uh, some apricot flavor into the bottle of Naked Grouse. Actually, this particular bottle I'm holding here is actually infused uh, with apricot flavor. However, in and itself, it is an excellent tasting scotch. I mean it is a blended scotch. It's not a single malt. You get that, but it's a, it really tastes great and I give it the nod above the monkey shoulder to tell you the truth because this bottle is going to be about 30 bucks or so. So for a cheap mixer for, for cocktails that you're mixing with scotch, uh, I would highly recommend Naked Grouse for about 30-35 bucks. All right. My Friday night pour. I had to put a peated scotch into our lineup today. So I am including the Art Bag Yugadol release. Now, 100% truth, the first time I've tasted a peated scotch some years ago, I thought it was complete and utter garbage. I mean, it, it's really earthy. Uh, it's, just, it's just a completely different flavor. Uh, than your normal whiskeys. But through the years, I, I on, honestly and truthfully, I, I've, I've come to actually really, really enjoy a good peated scotch. Now, this particular art bag uh, release, the Yugadol, comes in at 54% uh, uh, ABV, so it's a little bit over 100 proof. Uh, but this bottle, I mean, there's some reading. I wasn't going to do that, but there's some reading on the back of this I'll read for you. Uh, marrying together traditional deep smoky notes with luscious, sweet, raisiny tones of old X sherry casks. I mean, when I drink, when I have a pour of this Ardbeg Yugadol, to me, it's, it's, it's kind of like uh, bacon, barbecue-y. I mean, it's smoky, it's earthy, and it's just freaking delicious as far as I'm concerned. Now my wife has one rule with this bottle that if I have a pour of this, I don't drink it around her because she says it stinks. But as far as I'm concerned, my Friday night pour, I will sit down without question with this Ardbeg Yugadol. It's a beautiful, beautiful Scotch whiskey, and, and it has the sherry finish. So it, it 
it's got a, a nice kind of a, a fruity flavor to it because of the sherry finish, but it doesn't oversaturate the whiskey. You still get that that meaty, smoky goodness out of this uh, out of this uh, Islay peated Scotch. All right, moving on to impress your guest. My bottle to impress my guest is going to be the Bunahaben 18 year old. Uh, anytime you pull out a Scotch that's and, you know that's been aged for 18 years you know that's pretty impressive you know on its own obviously so that in itself will impress your guests but specifically with this Buna Haben 18 year old the flavors on this thing is just ridiculously out of the box the caramel and toffee flavors you get it's kind of like a honest honest honestly it's like a, a, a salted caramel. It's like a salted chocolate caramel. It's a, it's got a little bit of the of the saltiness. I mean, it, it's got a big toffee punch to it. It's just it's just honestly a beautiful beautiful whiskey. And and if I have friends come down here that say, hey, I, I want I want to taste one of your what you think is one of your very nice scotches, without question, I'm going to pull out this Buna Hobbin. 18 year old. Let me see real quick. This one comes in at 46.3% dried fruit, sherried with toffee, spicy notes, leading to a rich honey nuttiness with hints of malt. I mean, that's about exactly what I just said, but adding a couple different things to it. But I could, I will recommend this highly. It's a very, very, very nice bottle. All right, from there. Last but not least, my special occasion scotch bottle. Now, you would think my special occasion scotch bottle because, I mean, I, scotch uh, more than any other whiskey. I mean, you could get something for $50, $60, and you could pay thousands upon thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars for rare scotch whiskeys. It's got a huge, huge collector base um, around the world for scotch whiskeys. But my particular bottle today cost me, I think it was $250. It's the Dalmar King Alexander III. The Dalmar King Alexander III. Actually, I got a glass here. I'm gonna pour just a little bit. America. All right, babe. I mean, this stuff is just I mean, it's just liquid gold. I mean, that's really, that's really about what I can say about it. Oh my God. That is so good. I don't know if they have tasting notes on theirs. Um, I don't see any tasting notes, but what, what I wanted to bring up with this here, it, it's, it's basically, what makes this so special that it was aged in six different cask types six different that's like unheard of and whoever is the master blender when that i mean this had to be just like a just like a mad scientist and it just came out with nothing but beauty at the end but i will read to you uh let's see here where it's at it was matured in ex-bourbon casks Methuselah oloroso sherry casks Madeira barrels, Marsala casks, pork pipes, and Cabernet Sauvignon wine barrels. I mean, for real. That that bottle has sweetness, has a little hint of smoke, but truthfully and honestly, that bottle from top to bottle, top to bottom, has been nothing but but sweetness, and it's just. It's just really hard to describe. It's just, it's just so, so good. So, since I like this bottle so much, and it was a little bit expensive, it was 250 bucks. Dalmore King Alexander III will be my special occasion bottle. I try to milk this out as long as I possibly can. So, just in a quick review here today, as far as my Scotch picks are concerned. My daily drinker, without question, is going to be this Brook Lottie, the classic Lottie, uh, followed up by a cheap mixer, which would be Naked Grouse's blended malt here. 
excellent mixer. My Friday night pour, I had to get in a good Islay peated scotch, and you have that here with this Ard Big Ugadol bottle. It's it's really really good. Uh, impress a friend. This Bunahaben 18 with the salted caramel and to toffee notes is just out of this world. Last but not least, my special occasion bottle. We just talked about it, the Dalmore King Alexander III. That concludes our whiskey and scotch reviews. Man, I had a hard time. It took me weeks to try to narrow this down to pick out the bottles, but I hope you were helped by these two shows. I know I learned a lot uh, just trying to pick the bottles, you know, that I thought would be the best. And so I had a bloody fantastic time, and I hope that you did as well watching these shows. Thank you so much. As always, we ask you to please drink responsibly. And we'll see you next time right down here with me in the basement bourbon bar. See ya.